So today the talk is titled The Future of Well-Being. And of course, if we talk about the future of well-being, we must go back and look at the past of well-being as well. I think a lot of you know that I went to medical school right here in Delhi at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences and afterwards took my training in medicine in various academic institutions uh, in the Boston area. And uh, the education was superb, but somewhere along the way, um, I had a uh, few insights. And the insights were a result of my observations treating patients, but also a result of my training in the field called neuroendocrinology. So as a physician, I think anyone, and there are many physicians I recognize here, colleagues and friends, uh, physicians who've been in practice recognize that um, you can have two patients who get the same illness, who have, who have the same illness, who might see the same physician, they get the same treatment, and they can still have completely different outcomes. So one patient can recover, the other patient can die, and for all practical purposes, they receive the same treatment by the same doctor for the same diagnosis. And so that is confusing if you think about it. The problem with our medicine today, which is very successful, and I'm not here to criticize contemporary scientific medicine, which is extremely successful, but the problem, the limitation of that kind of medicine is that it is a purely physical approach to a physical body. We are trained to think of the human body in purely physical terms and frequently in anatomical terms. We think of a body as a structure and then we try to figure out the mechanisms of illness and then we try and interfere with them with the appropriate modality. So we try and figure out how bacteria multiply and then we interfere with that with an antibiotic or we figure out how cancer cells replicate and we interfere with that with a chemotherapeutic agent. And frequently that works but as a long-term strategy it frequently does not work. And that is because mechanisms of illness are not the same thing as origins of illness, two different things. The origins of illness have to do with understanding the body not as a physical structure, but as a process. Now the best way I can define that is your body is not a structure, meaning it's not a noun, it's a verb. In fact, there are no nouns in the universe. Nouns are conventions of language. They're not descriptions of reality. Because reality is an activity. Everything is changing all the time. Reality is a flux. Okay? This moment is different from the previous moment. Your body is different from the body that you came into this room with a little while ago. In fact, this is not philosophical. This is a scientific truth. Your physical body, which is made up of atoms and molecules, is constantly recycling and uh, it recycles through biological processes such as eating, breathing, digestion, metabolism, elimination, but also this whole process is influenced by everything that's happening around us, which means our personal relationships, our social interactions, our emotions, our thoughts, our perception, our environment, the forces of nature and the cosmos, these all influence this physical body. And this physical body is not the same that it was yesterday. It's, as the Greek philosopher Heraclitus once said, the body is like a river. And he's very frequently quoted as saying, you cannot step into the same river twice because it's a new river and it's a new man or a new human being. So with every breath that you breathe in, 
you breathe in 10 to the power of 22 atoms from the physical universe. 10 to the power of 22 means 10 followed by 22 zeros. Every time you breathe out, you breathe out 10 to the power of 22 atoms. And these atoms have their origin in every cell of your body. They're coming from all the parts of your body. So at the atomic level, you're breathing out bits and pieces of your heart and kidney and brain tissue. And technically speaking, we're all intimately sharing our organs with each other all the time. 